Today we're going to look at some different works of art and we're going to try to identify some elements of art that we can find within them. Now the elements of art are the building blocks of all artwork and they consist of line, shape, form, color, value, space, and texture. So we should be able to find some of these things in these artworks and see how they were used effectively. So starting out, let's look at this image, Portrait à la Campagne. Um, it was done in 1876 by Gustave Caybot. And as you can see, we can find a couple of different elements of art in this uh, work of art here. We can see that we have space. Uh, this is not just a very simple slice of space. We can see that we have a foreground with this woman here. And then that recedes back to our background, which is back here, this barn kind of hiding behind these trees. Now, Gustav accomplishes this illusion of space by doing a couple of things. First of all, he overlaps. So he puts the things that are closer to us in clear view, and then those items overlap things that are farther back in the distance. He also uses something called atmospheric perspective, where things in the background are just a little bit lighter, sometimes even bluer, and they're less distinct. So there's less detail in things that are in the background than the, than the things that are in the foreground. Here we can see all of this detail in this dress. That's something that you wouldn't typically see in the background if you were trying to, to express uh, atmospheric perspective. We can also see things in the foreground are larger than things in the background. So if we look at this woman here, if I was to take this size over to this woman, you can see that this woman in the background is only about the height of this woman from the floor to her knee. Now obviously this woman isn't actually that small, but she just appears to be smaller because she's set farther back in the background. Now another thing that you'll oftentimes see uh, to depict space is a high horizon line. So here our horizon line in the background is very high um, and that would just be the last little bit of space that we can see um, is up very high and then everything that's closer to us gets lower in the composition. So space is definitely being used well in this image. Now we also have quite a bit of patterning created by lines. We have some uh, repetition of lines in the shutter here in the bench, um, here in the uh, little awning. So you can see a lot of different lines, also different types of lines in the ornate lines that are in the chairs here too. We also see some texture. Uh, the lines, the repetition of the lines is actually creating a texture on the shutters. We're also seeing a texture throughout the flowers back here, the billowing uh, kind of folds of the fabric. So we're definitely seeing a lot of texture uh, value, we're seeing some shading in here. So where these folds are shading over, I uh, remember value is just the lightness or darkness of color. So we're seeing some tints, some higher uh, values in the highlights, and then some shades, some darker values in those shadows. Um, so we can see a lot of different elements here. And the only element that we won't be talking about today specifically is form. And that's because form is a three-dimensional element. So uh, we are only going to be talking about two-dimensional works of art today. So really this hits almost on all of the different elements. We have our color, we have our line, shape. You can, oh, and I didn't really talk about shape, but we can see a variety of different shapes that are being being represented in the oblongs here and in the organic shapes of the trees. Um, color, value, space, and texture. So let's go back to our next, or go on to our next work of art here. And this is another Gustav. This is Gustav Klimt, and this is The Kiss. And I actually love this work of art because of all of the patterns and texture that we get from the repetition of shape. So here we're seeing a ton of different shapes that are being repeated in different patterns to create almost a textural feel. So we're, uh, we're kind of hitting on three different strong elements there. Uh, use of color, we have these really bold uses of color. Uh, texture, which is one of the elements of art, and that texture is being created by shapes that are being repeated. So if you look at the man, 
He has very geometric shapes. He's got these squares and these rectangles. And the woman has very organic shapes, circles and ovals that are being repeated. They're also on a platform that has a lot of organic shapes as well. Um, and that organic kind of quality is being um, emphasized by the color choices too, where we have these kind of rich greens and blues. So it's a really beautiful piece of art and it just kind of mesmerizes you with the use of all of these different shapes and patterns. Another work of art that's like that is our next work. And it's by Vincent van Gogh. You've probably heard of him. He's kind of a big deal. And this is Starry Night, his arguably most famous work of art. And here we can see quite a bit of line. Now we don't see extremely long lines, but if you look at the little swirls and the glows up here in the sky, you can see they're all made of these little dashes of lines. Also, those lines appear everywhere throughout the artwork. We can see them through the hills here. We can see them on the tops of the houses. We can see them through the trees here. And yes, those are trees. Those are um, often uh, kind of confusing shapes here in the front, but those are trees. So we can see that there's a variety of different lines. Here we can also see a little bit of atmospheric perspective in that if you notice, the things that are farther in the background are a little bit lighter. And they're a little, well, they're not necessarily bluer because everything is blue in here, but they are definitely a little bit lighter uh, than the things in the foreground. Now, color, we have a pretty limited color palette in this, and um, it's almost complementary colors, but not quite. Um, it would be complementary if we had blue and orange, but we have this kind of blue and gold that's going on. Um, so very limited colors, but as you can see with the blues, there's many different tints and shades, so many different values of blue that are going through this entire piece of art. All right. Moving on to another very kind of whimsical piece of art. Uh, this is Marc Chagall's Eye and the Village. And you can see the most prominent element of art probably in this work is color. You can see a variety of bold color choices that the artist made. You can also see quite a bit of shape. Um, and shape is being used even in kind of unusual ways. So here we can see a man's face, and we can see a goat's face here, but also notice that through both of these faces and this shape down here, this kind of tree shape, we see a circle. Now that circle kind of helps to connect this whole composition together. And it's a really interesting way that this artist chose to use shape. Now it's not a very obvious circle. He didn't uh, make it in a really, uh, bold, crisp line. He just kept it to kind of this faded pattern and he kept the colors the same within the face and the different parts of the background. But if you look, you can clearly see that circle. You can also see different shapes that are being used to make up these different, uh, different subjects in the painting. Uh, here in the background, we have very simple shapes. Uh, we're not getting as much space in this, though we are getting a little bit. Because this is a little, a little bit more um, abstract, we don't get the sense for space and really deep space that we got um, in some of the other paintings. However, you can tell that there is a city scene in the background because we have these tiny little houses uh, that are back here. Some of them are flipped upside down, but we still get that sense for them being way back in the background. Um, also, if you'll notice, they are up higher, which also gives us that sense that they are further back. All right, our last work of art here today is by John James Audubon, and actually these are two of his works of art. It's the American Flamingo and the White Garfalcons. I hope I am saying Garfalcon correctly there. Um, and as you can see with both of these images, we have a lot of the uh, elements being used here. Uh, we can see in this flamingo image specifically, a ton of atmospheric perspective. Notice how bold and rich the colors in the flamingo are 
uh, that is closest to us. But notice there are also flamingos in the background, and those flamingos are extremely faded. Um, and even though the horizon line back here is still kind of low on the entire pl uh, picture plane, it still is above our flamingo. So the flamingo's feet being closer and lower to the ground gives us the impression that that flamingo is also closer to us. Now, this is a limited color palette that is used throughout this image. We've got these uh, colors of pink and yellow and brown and just a slight shade of blue. And so that's a really effective use of color, um, just kind of almost staying in a monochromatic kind of uh, color scheme there. Um, beyond that, we have some beautiful feathery texture that's being shown through the uh, body here of the flamingo. And we've got this kind of uh, webby texture here through the feet and almost even a shiny texture through the beak. So a lot of the elements are being hit with this flamingo image. Um, if we look at the falcons over here, you can see that to me the most prominent element of art that's being shown here is texture. We can see all of these textures in the wings of this falcon that are being dis displayed so beautifully. And a lot of that's being displayed in that repetition of shape. So we've got not only the shape of the wing itself, but we've got this kind of decorative black, almost um, a chevron here that's being repeated throughout these different feathers that just gives it that beautiful ornate texture. Um, and with, sh uh, with the texture, of course, that's being created by shape, and you can see a lot of shape in this as well. We have the shapes of the feathers. We have this very crisp outline of the bird. So there you can see a very exacting shape. Um, you can also see a lot of value throughout these different images. You can see the shadows, the highlights. So you're seeing a lot of the shading that's going around there as well. Uh, again, this is a very simplistic color scheme. We've got some neutral tones of browns and yellows, uh, and the yellows are really more of a tan, which makes it almost a neutral. And then we have, of course, the whites and the blacks that are in uh, the different patterns that are on the birds. So hopefully, by going through this with me, you can see that any artwork can be broken down into different elements of art. So as you're making your own artwork, think about um, all of these beautiful works of art that we just looked at by John James Audubon, Marc Chagall, Vincent van Gogh, Gustav Klimt, and Gustav Kaibat. And the next time you look at another work of art, uh, try to do this yourself and come up with some ways that the artist used the elements in their particular pieces. All right, have fun and let's make some art.